Let's start with a controversy in Major League Baseball. Seattle, Seattle Mariners catcher Steve Clevenger responded to the ongoing protests over shooting by police officers in Charlotte, North Carolina with controversial tweets yesterday. Clevenger tweeted, black people beating whites when a thug got shot holding a gun by a black officer. Ha ha, bleep cracks me up. Keep kneeling for the anthem. Clevenger added another tweet, BLM, Black Lives Matter, is pathetic once again. Obama, you are pathetic once again. Everyone involved should be locked behind bars like animals. Seattle Mariners GM Jerry Depoto issued this statement. The Seattle Mariners are very disappointed at the tweets posted on Steve Clevenger's account. While he is certainly free to express himself, his tweets do not in any way represent the opinions of the Seattle Mariners. We strongly disagree with the language and the tone of his statements. We are currently examining all internal options that are available to us as we determine appropriate next steps. We will have no further comment at this time. Clevenger issued an apology late last night as well. Skip, what is your reaction? Joy, Shannon, I am ashamed to share this man's skin color. I am appalled that another white American, a professional athlete no less, is capable of typing these evil thoughts in a public forum in two different tweets and actually hitting send. You wanna talk about showing your true colors in public? I am outraged that the Seattle Mariners, as Joy just pointed out, issued a statement defending Steve Clevenger's right to free speech, while of course distancing the, the teams for the team's sake by saying that his thoughts do not in any way represent the opinions of the Seattle Mariners. I cannot believe that, that he's still a Seattle Mariner as we speak, as far as I know, because I will point out, he does have at least one African-American teammate, a pitcher named Taiwan Walker, starting pitcher. How, by chance, would he feel about throwing to the backup catcher, if in fact he were catching that day, after those two tweets? How can the Seattle Mariners say they're just looking into these tweets and continuing, even though he's on the 60-day disabled list, letting this man represent that organization? And how can Major League Baseball have not already swooped in and said, that's it, that's all, it's over. You are suspended for at least half of next season, even though we know the Players Association would probably appeal and get that reduced. But a statement has to have been made already. These were tweeted sort of mid-afternoon mm -hmm. yesterday. There was plenty of time to look into and respond to this. And I'm astounded nothing has happened yet because Steve Clevenger called the man who was shot in Charlotte a thug, which to me, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that's one step short of the N-word, if not real close. Am I right? It's in the ballpark. <laughs> yep. And Steve Clevenger laughed at the black protests over black men getting shot, unarmed black men getting shot by white cops and derisively concluded his first tweet with, keep kneeling for the anthem. And then that wasn't enough. He couldn't stop himself. He tweeted a second tweet saying, Black Lives Matter is pathetic again. And our president, Obama, is pathetic again. And everyone involved in these protests should be locked up behind bars like animals. And as soon as I saw that, I thought of what my man Shannon Sharp said on this show yesterday, somewhat sarcastically, you said, at least we'd like to be treated a little better than animals. And now we have a white man, a professional athlete, saying you should be locked up like animals, in your face like animals. And I'm thinking, what is he thinking? And yet he then posts an apology saying, and, and if this weren't so sad, it, it would be laughable, that, this is Steve Clevenger's words, I am sickened by the idea that anyone would think of me in racist terms. Racist terms, these are the most outrageous racist terms anyone could, pro could post short of using the N-word to me. And I'm waiting for the next phase of this when he says, oh, I'd had a few drinks. It's the Riley Cooper defense. Mm -hmm. And I was on another show on ESPN when the Riley Cooper incident happened. 
And I've never been more outraged over anything in my career. And I said, Riley Cooper had to go for using, as you recall, he's caught on cell phone yep. video at a country Western concert in Philadelphia in the preseason mm -hmm. using the flat out N word. I'm not talking about the one that ends in A. I'm talking about the E with the hard ER on the end. And he got away with it because his head coach and presumably his front office just sent him home for the weekend, and he came back and was allowed to quickly play for the Philadelphia Eagles, onward and upward under Chip Kelly, as if nothing had happened. He was saved because Michael Vick, I think regretted saying this, but Michael supported Riley Cooper the, the first day and then backed off about a week later and said, you know, maybe I overreacted. I'm paraphrasing what Michael said, yeah. because Michael overreacted. He should not have supported Riley right. Cooper, who's still playing in the National Football League. But my point is, in the end, we have America's pastime, America's oldest sport, professional sport, again, being perceived as racist to the core, as being perceived as a white man's sport, as Adam Jones called it the other day, as being perceived as being run by the good old boy network. And I can't defend it today because it has not moved quickly to remove a plague on baseball, Steve Clevenger. There's no defense of this. It, it, even if you tell me you had a few drinks, that's nothing but truth serum to me. That's all it is. You're, you're just going to have free, you, you're gonna be freer to speak your heart. Steve Clevenger tweeted his heart. Riley Cooper spoke his racist heart. I don't wanna hear anything else. And again, I'm ashamed to, to have to share this man's skin color. Skip, I told you two years ago, on your show that you were on. I said, my grandmother told me there's three types of people that would generally tell you the truth. Kids, drunks, and angry people. And see, angry people will tell you the truth because they want to say to you, what is the one thing or what are the, the phrases or the words that I can use that can make you most upset? He says, black people beating whites when a thug gets shot holding a gun by a black officer. Ha, 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 bleeps cracks me up. Keep kneeling for the anthem. Someone losing their life tickles you. Somehow, Ka Colin Kaepernick and other professional athletes kneeling for the anthem caused this to happen. I don't see the correlation. I don't see how one has something to do with the other. But see, that wasn't enough because now he has to take it up a notch. BLM, pathetic once again. Now, I don't know. Maybe the media has said uh, 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 the Black Lives Matter movement organized these protests or these rallies. I didn't hear anything about that. But this is where he, he knew what this response would elicit. Obama, you're pathetic once again. Now, I hate when anybody addressed a president by their last name or their first name, because he's a president. It should always be preceded by President Obama or former President George Bush. I agree. So we know there's a large segment of our population in America that disapprove of President Obama being a two-term black president. It has nothing to do with politics, Skip. You can say, okay, he did this, he, he, the Middle East, and he messed up that, and, and unemployment is still at an all-time high. You can say that, but a lot of this doesn't have to do with his policies. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with his skin tone. So he knew that going in. Skip, I don't know if you play poker, but in No Limit Poker, they deal each player at the table two cards face down. That way, Joy and Skip can't see my cards. I can see his hand. Mm. See, there's Chris Rock said there's two apps that will tell you a person's racist. It's called Twitter and Facebook because it allows us to have a lens into their keyboard, into their homes, into their soul, what they're thinking. Because you're going to tweet, normally people will tweet like they talk. Mm -hmm. If you look at Dr. King's writings, that's how he spoke. You look at Maya Angelou's writings, that's how she wrote. We kind of talk. We write like we talk. Uh, <laughs> and then after he makes these tweets, he makes it, he makes his uh, Twitter page private. And he says, he apologized for the distractions on my personal page. 
This was my personal page. People, what are y'all doing looking at my personal page? I know what I said, but you shouldn't look at it. I'm like, really? And this is where, and he chose this. Now, this is not an accident that he chose this phrase. I am very proud to where I've come from inner city. Um, he says, I am also proud that my inner circle of my friends has never defined by race, but the content of their character. I, I think his agent wrote this for him. That's how it reads <laughs> yeah. to me. Could be wrong. But. Did Dr. King ever think in his wildest imagination he no. would become so popular and come, become so quoted? Mm. And then, skip, this, skip, this is what got me. I just ask that the public not judge me because of my ill-worded tweets. I'm not apologizing for what I said. This is what I really think, but I just worded it wrong. See, if I could have worded it just a little different, you wouldn't be so upset. I once again apologize to anyone who I offended today, and I just ask that you not judge me off my social media posting. He doesn't have 30 home runs and 100 RBIs. Had he not done this, I would have not known Heck who no. he was. No. So how else am I supposed to judge you? So, which is it? Your private page, you're upset that we got an opportunity to look at your private page. Are you upset by the wording in which you used? I don't, and somehow, I got no problem with his First Amendment freedom of speech. I embrace it. Sure. But you know what, Skip? I know what I'm dealing with now. I know who and what you are. You spoke, as you said, Skip, he spoke his heart. This is how he feels. Now, you can hide it, but eventually, I told you a couple of weeks ago, Skip, if you let someone speak long enough, they will reveal who they are. Now, it might take a situation where they get drunk. Might. They might take a situation where they become angry. Yep. But if you let them talk long enough, they will reveal to you mm -hmm. the very person that they are. Because he, when you play sports, you, would, you got black, you got white, you got Asian, you got all, you got uh, different religious backgrounds, dis different social economic status, and you come together. That's why sports is so unique, because you're blending so many different backgrounds, so many different ideologies for one common goal. That's to win. And then you go about your merry way, and so you can mask it. But eventually, something or someone can push your buttons and make you speak open your heart, open your soul, and it just flows out mm -hmm. like lava from a volcano. This set him off. This protest, and it was a few bad apples. See, when someone, when Dylan Roof did what he did, I didn't say, you know what, the highest elected white official, you're pathetic. That doesn't, that doesn't even cross my mind. See, President Obama was always on his mind. Because I don't see how you get the correlation between what's going on in Charlotte and President Obama. Last I checked, he wasn't a member of Black Lives Matter. Last I checked, he wasn't down there standing on cars, looting, riding. So how do you draw the correlation between that and this? Skip, he spoke honestly. Mm -hmm. He spoke so honestly. Now, this is not unprecedented for the National League, for, uh, for MLB, because John Rocker did say something similar in the offseason. And, the, and Major League Baseball suspended him for the first 73 days of the regular season. Got reduced, but they, right. they jumped right. That was Bud Seeley right. at his best. But again, that was 2000, that was 16 right. years ago, and that was a, a conversation with the Sports Illustrator, right? R right. Yeah. So, and here's the thing. He says all this, and he says it's ill-worded, and he apologized and not to be judged by his social media posting. So, was this an accident? I mean, were you hacked? Because, you know, there's a big hacking scandal going on now. Like 500 million people have been hacked. So maybe yeah. he was one of them. Maybe. Skip. This just goes to show you is that people thought that we had come such a long, long way. And we have. We, we have in some ways. We have. Not in that way. But. Yes. Electing a black president gave us an opportunity to see and now we have camera phones. Now we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. When people get upset, they will reveal, mm -hmm. they will show you exactly who they are. And then they'll issue this, this, oh, I'm so sorry. That's not who I am. That's exactly who you are. I, I've been upset. But certain things don't cross my mind. That, 
that would never, ever even cross my mind. That's a good point. To, to it, call, as angry as you get, that wouldn't cross your mind. Because you know what? See, alcohol would change your behavior. It, was, it doesn't change your morality. No. See, your, mor your morals are what they are, Skip. Yeah. You, they're ingrained in you. So you can't gain or lose them through alcohol. No. But when you become angry, your, mor your morals will show so vividly and mm -hmm. crystal clear. And now I get an opportunity to see. So mm -hmm. now you've shown me your hands. I know you're not bluffing. You got what you say you had. When you kept raising the ante with the first one and you tried to put me all in, and when you, hey, I followed you because I thought you were bluffing. But when you flip those cards over and I saw these tweets and then I see this half-hearted apology, you got the goods, bro. You are what I think you are. And scariest of all, he apologizes with the thought that me, racist? That, that's, that's, what, th th that's why he represents a segment of white America that is racist but doesn't even know no, it's racist. It, In the end, that's who he represents, that, right? That's me, it. racist? What did I say? You said this. You don't even get it. He does Tone deaf. Really. And, and again, this is a 30-year-old journeyman backup catcher, his third Major League Baseball mm -hmm. team. I don't know. I, I think he's just barely hanging on. Right. And... What would possess you to, to endanger your, what's left of Let, your career by tweeting this? It's because you can't help yourself for whatever reason, whatever sparked something inside him, mm -hmm. something, some switch was flipped by something he read or heard or saw on television that he said, I need to tweet these things. Yes, I need and, to get my feelings, my yes. emotions out. Right. And he, he mentions like he's from Baltimore. He's from Baltimore. Where you from doesn't make you racist. Who you are, what you do, what you say makes you racist. Geographically, where you the state, south, the south, north, northeast, the Midwest, that has nothing to do, Skip. When you're 30 years of age, you are what you are. Yep. He's moved a lot of different places. But the one thing that stayed in him, mm. we saw it.